Welcome to this tutorial where I'll show you how to use React DevTools in Safari. As you probably know, there's no browser extension for React DevTools in Safari. That's why, in this video, I'll show you how to install and use the standalone version of React DevTools to debug a React application running in Safari. The standalone version of React DevTools can also help you debug apps that aren't based directly in the browser, like React Native apps, or apps loaded inside iframes. Or, if you're using a solution like Next.js or React Server Components to perform server-side rendering, you can use the standalone version of React Dev Tools. So let's get started. First, I'll show you how to set up React Dev Tools on your Mac and then debug the React application running in Safari. Before you begin, make sure you have a code editor like Visual Studio Code, Git, and Node.js installed on your system. You can find a link for all these prerequisites in the video description. If you're following along, we've created a GitHub repository that's linked in the description that includes a sample React application. This demo app is quite simple. It renders a list of users, each containing a first name, last name, age, and date of birth. Let's start by cloning the repo. I'll go back to the repo's homepage and copy its URL. Next, I'll open up a new terminal window and clone the repo using the git clone command. The main branch of the repo contains the app's source code. Next, I'll change my working directory into the project directory by running the command cd react sample users list app and I'll start up the app with the command npm install. Now let's open up the app in a new Safari window. This is what it currently looks like. Now it's time to install the React DevTools package. The easiest way to use it is to install it globally on your system using the command yarn global add react dev tools. In some cases, you'll need to use sudo to run the command successfully. Then use the command react dev tools to run the package. Once the tool starts, I'm given instructions on how to configure my React app. I'll add the given script to my React DOM by adding this line to the index.html file in the public folder. I'll quickly open up the project in my code editor and paste the line in the index.html file. Remember that while this tutorial uses a script with a local host link, you can also use your LAN IP address. If you're working with mobile apps, you'll need to use the link with the LAN IP address instead of localhost. Now I'll navigate back to the React Dev Tools window where I'll debug my application. But before I do, let's briefly discuss the various elements. On the left side of the screen is my application tree. It begins with the app component at the top, followed by the users list component, and ends with the user component. The application tree provides visual representations of the components that help you quickly identify rendering issues and data flow. You can inspect the properties and state of each component to pinpoint bugs and troubleshoot issues. If you click the users list component in the tree, the props that are passed to the component will be displayed in the pane on the right. In this case, the props include the array of users from your dummy data. Clicking a user component displays the props that it passes. In this scenario, it's the user object. You can click any of the three user components to check their relative props. You can also pin the location of a selected component in your browser by clicking the eye icon. Once this has been activated, it will highlight the component in light blue in your browser. You can also log the selected component in the console by clicking the bug icon. You can then open up the JavaScript console in Safari by opening the develop menu on the menu bar and selecting show JavaScript console. This is what your logged components will look like. The standalone version of React DevTools is particularly useful because it can be used with any React application, whether it's running locally or on a remote server, and it provides a separate, dedicated window for debugging purposes. However, keep in mind that the standalone version of React DevTools often requires manual configuration to connect to the target app, which can be time-consuming and error-prone. It can also lack some browser-specific features like network request inspection, JavaScript debugging, and browser performance profiling. That means certain tasks, 
like interacting with browser APIs or manipulating the DOM, may be more challenging or impossible to accomplish using the standalone version. Additionally, the standalone version of React DevTools may have different performance characteristics and resource usage compared to the Chrome extension version. And that's it! If you followed along, you should be able to set up, connect, and use React DevTools to inspect and debug your React applications. Happy coding!